ladies and gentlemen, it's another broadcast of Jerusalem's Gate. I appreciate uh, if you watched the last two uh, broadcasts for sermons. They're very important sermons. I ask you to go back if you haven't seen it and watch it. It's extremely important. But uh, this is uh, back to the news. Okay. The uh, First, before I like to start, start off, I like to say I support our Commander-in-Chief. Okay. But he's not perfect. He's not perfect. Okay. We're seeing... The U.S. pull out of the East, a slow pull out of the East. This particular video is about pulling out of Afghanistan. Now, you've seen Russia, and I preach time and time again, Russia is, is known as the new kid on the block, Putin. Uh, he's got Iran. Uh, he's, back in, he, he's working through Iran to the Houthis to take over Yemen. And he's, uh, they're directly into Syria. Okay. Now, if we pull out, and it looks like we are, we, if we keep pulling out the east, uh, in like uh, Afghanistan, for example, you will start seeing somebody fill that void. Everybody in Afghanistan was making a good living when the U.S. was there, and they're fearing this. Uh, most of those people are going to be led, a good portion of those people, I should say, are going to be led to fight for money. Most of the people in the East in these wars are paid to fight. That's how they make their living. I know that's strange to us in the West, but I, I can assure you that's the truth. Now, if the U.S. pulls out, Russia is going to fill that void. What is Russia going after? Why are they so concerned in, in, in getting more influence in the East? It is exactly what God, and I spoke, I, I spoke what God said in Ezekiel, that they've come to take a spoil. What is that spoil? And the bait on that hook is oil. Isn't it strange though, and I just thought of this a little while ago, that the uh, King James Version in Ezekiel 38 talks about, the, what have you, God, God's quoting, what have you come to, come to take a spoil? Talking about the nations going into the east in the latter days which we're living. Isn't it weird that spoil, all you do is drop the SP and oil, O-I-L, just, just curiosity, just curiosity, I just find it, because uh, God works by things like that, he, he works by symbolisms and metaphors and stuff, such, and that's how God works, but uh, when we, it, it looks like we're going to pull out of Afghanistan, look for civil unrest, start slowly gathering, small factions fighting for control, civil unrest, civil war, exactly what the Lord led me to tell you about when we pulled out of Iraq. Something or some power is going to fill that void. And that ultimate force is Russia. Don't forget, Putin is a, was trained at a very young age in the KGB how to do things like this. Uh, yes, I know that Afghanistan was uh, the USSR's, the old USSR's Vietnam. But uh, Russia is a different country now. And... Uh, to control the oil, they got you got to control the, the whole part of the east to make sure that, that you have complete control where nobody can come against you to control that. Why does Putin want, want to uh, get uh, stronger in the east? Because oil, trillions and trillions of dollars. You control the oil in the east, you, you control the world economy. Ru Russia needs money. What other what, what's the best way to get the most amount of money in the world? Control the flow of the uh, controlling could not only control the oil but the flow of the oil in the east, ladies and gentlemen. Ezekiel 38 talks about it. I preached and preached and preached about it. I'm not going to stop preaching about it until the Lord takes me home, because I truly believe God has uh, put this in my heart to say, if we pull out and it looks like we are, start seeing the same thing happen in Iraq. Little, little groups fighting each other, outside forces coming in with money, they pay people to fight, they have to feed their family, and they fight. So I got a video that talk, that, that addresses this, what, what they fear in uh, Afghanistan, the average person, a, average citizen. So with that in mind, uh, we love you. Uh, here comes the video. Thanks for tuning in. It never shuts down. More than 20,000 loaves of bread are baked here every day, mainly for one client, the nearby Bagram Air Base. But demand isn't what it used to be. This bread is for the Afghan army at the base. Business was better a few years ago when there were more Americans. We were making much more bread. Now, it's slowed down. 
Bagram is home to the largest U.S. military facility in Afghanistan, and part of the Afghan National Army is also based here. Its history is deeply connected to the successive wars in the country. The Soviets first built the airfield in the 1980s. Then it became the front line during the civil war in the 1990s, occupied by the Taliban, and now home to the U.S. military since 2001. That made of Bagram a target for the Taliban. It has seen many deadly attacks, and people here have paid a heavy price. Part of the agreement is that all foreign troops should be phased out of the country within the next 14 months, should everything go to plan. But in places like Bagram, there are concerns that this departure will create a vacuum on more levels than one. There was a time when the base was one of the biggest employers in the country. Shakar Ara worked for eight years there. He was laid off when the Obama administration reduced the number of U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. I had a good salary when I was working at the airbase. Now business is not good. It's hard for people to put food on the table for their families. They can't afford to buy clothes. There are fewer weddings. People just don't spend as much anymore. Everyone we met has a story about how the town thrived at the peak of the U.S. military presence and how the downturn has hit them hard. Khan Pasha was nicknamed Pinky when he worked at the base. His salary allowed him to get married and start a family. Now he drives a rickshaw. The wait for clients is long. He makes about $2 a day on a good one, and the future makes him uncomfortable. What if the Americans leave and the fighting goes back to what it used to be during the Civil War? What's the point? I don't know if the government can protect us. And what's peace without jobs? Then we will prefer war, because at least we can earn a living. What will we do with peace if we cannot feed our families? The Taliban may be celebrating the departure of the first batch of U.S. soldiers, but many Afghans here in Bagram and elsewhere wonder what will happen to them if all foreign troops are indeed withdrawn. Well, Afghans have by and large watched uh, while, you know, the U.S. and the Taliban signing a deal. They also now are watching their leaders uh, fighting and not able to put their rivalries aside to try to find a compromise and be in a strong position when indeed these intra-Afghan talks. And many would tell you, well, it is the U.S. that guarantees the security of the country. And if they leave, who is going to guarantee our security? That is a big worry. Many, many Afghans I spoke to have at the moment. Right. Those talks are next crucial phase. Uh, Hodder, thanks very much indeed.